Hey everyone, in this video we'll be solving this problem from Jan Calder's handouts uh, of kinematics. And so the problem is basically, so there's a block that is being pushed onto a conveyor belt. The belt is moving at a velocity of one meter per second. And the block's initial velocity is two meter per second and it is perpendicular to the belt's velocity. So during its subsequent motion, we need to find the minimum velocity of the block with respect to the ground. The coefficient of friction is large enough to prevent the block from falling off the belt. So let's begin with the solution. So it's and it's given that it's moving to the right with a velocity of one meter per second. And then then we have a block here. It's pushed into the conveyor belt with a velocity of two meter per second perpendicular to the direction of motion of the conveyor belt. So we have to determine the minimum speed of the subsequent motion. Step one is whenever we have so whenever like friction is involved in a problem, step one is to go into the frame of reference of the environment that is causing the friction. So in this problem, the environment that is causing the friction is the belt, right? So if we go into the frame of reference of the, so then we have to forget about this velocity, reverse it and add it to the block. Relative to the uh, belt, the block will move along the direction of the result, which is at an angle, let's say theta, and we can write tan theta to be equal to half. So it will move in this direction with a velocity of root five meters per second. So the use of going into the frame of reference of the belt that is that we can directly find the direction of friction and it will be opposite to the relative velocity, right? So the direction of friction will be in this direction. So now if we go back to the ground frame, it will look something like this, right? Because the force of friction does not change does not depend on the frame of reference. Okay, now uh, there are two methods of solving this problem. And the first method is a general method. And the second method is uh, so much more superior to the first method. Uh, like it'll give you the answer in just one step by drawing a vector diagram. But first, let's just discuss the general method. So here, if I define this as the x-axis, if I say this is the y-axis, we can get ax to be f sine theta divided by so I'm just gonna call f by m as some constant a, let's say. So this is going to be a sine theta and a y is going to be minus a cos theta. Now sine theta and cos theta, we can just say it is. So this would be a upon root five and this is going to be minus two a upon root five. So now if we have to write velocity as a function of time, so it'll have i cap and j cap components. So the i cap component is, initially the i velocity along the x direction is zero. Uh, of the block. So it is simply going to be acceleration times time, right? We're using V equal to U plus AT here. The acceleration is A by root five times T. This is the velocity in the I cap component. J cap component will be two minus two A by root five times T. And this is the J cap component. Now we have to find the speed. So that is simply the modulus of velocity. And that will come out to be, uh, so I'm just gonna say A by root five as some other constant K, let's say. So, this is going to be, if I open it up, this is what I'll get, okay? Now, as this is a quadratic equation with positive a, we know the minima comes at the point minus b by 2a comma minus d by 4a. Now, as we want the minimum value of this quadratic equation, so, and that is going to be v minimum squared, right? This is going to be 4 by 5. From here, we'll get the minimum veloc minimum speed or minimum velocity to be equal to two by root five meters per second. So this is the general method for solving it. You need to find speed as a function of time and find the minima of that. Next method that I was gonna be telling you is much, is going to make this so much more easier. So this is the vector triangle method. We determine the relative velocity to be initially root five meters per second in, and this was the velocity of the block with respect to ground initially, which was two meter per second. Now this two meter per second is the velocity of the belt relative to ground, okay? This root five meter per second is the velocity of the block relative to the belt. If I add the velocity of the belt to it, I should get the velocity of the block with respect to ground, okay? Now the thing is this one meter per second vector, it does not change because it's it's just the velocity of the belt, right? It's not changing. Now, as we know, the friction is acting opposite to this 
relative velocity vector the magnitude of this vector is going to decrease like we know that so let's say after some time this vector becomes like something like this now the direction of this root 5 meter per second won't change now as we projected this with a velocity of 2 initially and this belt was moving towards the right with 1 meter per second now if we go into the frame of reference of the belt this will be root 5 meter per second and this direction will be the same so the direction of this relative velocity it won't change it will be in this direction only so only its magnitude will decrease so let's say after some time its magnitude is this much so now the velocity with respect to ground will be this vector this red color vector this would be the velocity of the block with respect to ground now it has decreased right so now the question is when will this be minimum and the answer to that will be it will be minimum when it is perpendicular to this relative velocity vector that we can easily find because we know this angle alpha as we know the value of so this is root 5 this is 1 and this is 2 so we can easily find the value of alpha and the value of uh, now the length of this side of the triangle is going to be 1 sine alpha and that will be also the minimum speed which will be 1 times sine alpha from this triangle comes out to be 2 by root 5 and the answer is 2 by root 5 meter per second so that was this method of the vector triangle and yeah that's it for this video guys if you enjoyed like and subscribe thanks for watching